this video is going to be on my workflow when I actually have to accomplish something on my computer. Because um, believe it or not, I do have to get stuff done. Um, so those of you who've seen my videos before know uh, this is Parabola, uh, which is basically Arch. And uh, I run i3, or specifically i3 gaps. Uh, so you'll notice the gaps if I have a couple windows. Um, so first off, I use a tiling window manager because I, I cannot understand why you would ever use anything else. If you like that kind of stuff, that's fine. But like all the time when I was a kid, I always wanted my windows to tile. I didn't even know what tiling was. Uh, but having a tiling windows manager just makes so much, sen so much sense to me. Um, so this is what I use actually for everything, but it's really nice when I'm actually getting stuff done. So let me show you how I do it. Uh, this is Ranger, the file manager. Um, I have a bunch of shortcuts to all my key folders. I'm going to go to the folder where I keep my qualifying paper. It's just two key presses away. Um, so I actually started rewriting my qualifying paper earlier this week um, from the beginning. I only have about five pages written right now. Uh, but let me open up the source file in Vim. This, of course, is uh, LaTeX. Uh, now I have the Vim LaTeX Live Preview. Uh, or is it Vim Live LaTeX? I, I always get it confused. But uh, as you can see on the right, uh, so this automatically updates when I make uh, changes to the source file. Uh, and this is basically where I do the actual writing of the document and all that stuff. Uh, so if you've seen my other videos on Vim, um, I have all like all the syntax uh, that you have to write for LaTeX or really any other language. Um, I just sort of keep them stored in different keyboard shortcuts. So I don't actually, so for example, if you see all this stuff here, it uh, looks like a whole bunch of you know crap to write. Uh, I didn't write any of this. All of this was just keyboard shortcuts. I just type the keyboard shortcuts and they do exactly what I want. Uh, so, I mean, I can basically get to the point where I forget how to even write LaTeX because it's all automated. Uh, but anyway, it's updated automatically over here. Very convenient. Uh, other general notes, so I can easily shift the gaps, uh, the you know, my i3 gaps. If I press Control shift or excuse me, uh, Super Shift D, gets rid of all the gaps if I need some more room. Uh, or I can just increase or decrease them with other keyboard shortcuts. Um, you know, so I can sort of get the feel I want. I do like having gaps pretty much at all times, uh, unless I'm like on my laptop screen only. Uh, so right now, let me uh, do my Neo Fetch. I am on a uh, ThinkPad X200, uh, but I'm hooked up to a screen, so I have a much bigger screen than usual. Uh, and when I'm at home, I actually usually have my ThinkPad in, in a dock. And I'll, on that, I'll have like, I might have like a music player, and then on the screen, I'll be doing actual work uh, or something like that. I mean, I might have some other kind of decoration on the, the actual computer screen, and you know, but I do all my actual work on the screen. Um, so, anyway, that's usually how my uh, screen one looks. Um, I'll have other tools open on other windows. So, for example, one of the tools I'm using is, um, let me, what folder is it in? Oh, the phonology folder. Uh, so one of the things I've been using for my qualifying paper is this tool called uh, OT Help. Um, so uh, I might as well explain it just because why not. Uh, so my, my um, qualifying paper is basically on uh, word order differences in languages, like um, you know where do you put your subje subjects, objects, and verbs. Um, and I'm arguing effectively that differences in where languages put subjects and objects is a function of their different prosodic constraints. Um, so I'm using OT help. This is a tool it stands for optimality theory help. It's a tool for doing um, optimality theory, which is a, a tool um, uh, basically for doing sort of constraint based neural net like analysis of traditionally phonology. But of course, I'm using it more for syntax. Uh, I can actually think while I'm uh, what am I even looking for? Oh, yeah. Um, so anyway, how this program works. Um, let me go ahead and pull it up over here too. Um, I have a CSV file, and this CSV file lists out different word orders, and it lists out different uh, prosodic constraints. And then for each pair, it tells you, for example, uh, SVO violates the contour constraint. Contour is like you don't want to have a subject and an object in the same phonological phrase, uh, and they're both in the same brackets here. Uh, so basically, um, I I make a little tablet, or tablet, tableau, it's not really a tableau, it's really just a CSV file here, and I feed it to the program, and what the program does is sort of decides 
of the constraints you feed it, what kind of languages are possible, uh, and it gives you this nice little interface where you can compare, okay, is it possible to have a uh, language with transitive sentences like this and intransitive sentences like that? If it's no, it turns red. Um, but it, it's a very helpful tool that I've been using, um, and I've I sort of had a breakthrough last week, and I'm getting answers that I really want. So that's been pretty helpful. That's why I started rewriting this thing because I um, sort of have a new analysis. Uh, but anyway, relevant to my workflow, I well for now I do have this open on usually a workspace. Um, I'll have another one for sort of references. Uh, so if you've seen my other videos on LaTeX, I keep one file where I have all of my all the things I've ever cited in LaTeX, and this is what all of my LaTeX documents refer to when they're looking for citations. So I don't really have to worry about you know keeping different files for it. So um, the first part of this file is al actually alphabetical. Um, you know these are all entries for different um, references or whatever, and it's the syntax that uh, BibLaTeX uh, will call. Uh, the first part is alphabetical. That's because the alphabetical ones I used in my um, uh, uh, what is it my thesis. Um, but afterwards, I just started adding stuff in whatever order I read it in, which is actually nice. I thought about doing the whole thing alphabetical, just, you know, for autism's sake. But it's actually better like this because um, if I forget, you know, let's say I'm looking for something uh, and I forget who wrote it or even what it was called. If I look in, you know, if I remember when I read it, I can sort of figure it out uh, where it is and find it here. Um, I also will sometimes keep like quotes. Uh, if there is some particularly important quote in it, I would just sort of mark it as, um, you know, some other non, so something else that BibLaTeX won't read. Uh, so that's another thing. And of course, you'll notice that all of them are named um, by, you know, the last name of the first author and the year it was written in, the last two digits of the year. And those are the tags I have to remember when I'm actually writing my document. Uh, that's what I call them as, and of course, LaTeX you know, puts them in the references and everything all automatically. Um, so that's usually how I call my references. Uh, but also recently I, I now have an articles folder and I don't have all the articles on the left in here. Uh, but in here I keep, uh, as I download them, I'll keep all articles in this folder. And of course they're sorted by, you know, last name and uh, year as well, uh, which is very, oh, it's supposed to be last two digits of um, anyway, so this, this is another thing that's pretty convenient. Um, and uh, so I do this for a couple of reasons. One, you'll notice I don't have internet here. Uh, and that's just because I don't have internet at my actual house. Uh, that's the life I chose for myself. I haven't had internet here for two years, um, which actually helps me in a lot of ways. Um, but, you know, if I... <clears throat> um, so I just download all the articles and I keep them here. And it's also just much more efficient to have them on your computer because otherwise I'd have to go on the my university's library's website and you know um, you know search for put in my password and search for these articles that are behind paywalls or whatever. Uh, so it's much better just having them there. So I usually have a, a window open for that kind of stuff um, as well. Um, so anyway, some so more like aesthetic stuff. If I want to go super simple. Um, you know, if I don't need it, if I need to just write prose, uh, I'll usually not have uh, the preview open and I'll have this thing full screen. And I also use um, Goyo sometimes, which is a, um, I forget who wrote it, but it's a plugin for Vim. I have it mapped to F10, so if I press that, uh, Goyo is supposed to be, uh, sort of gives you a more intuitive, more distraction free writing environment. So that's what this is about. Um, and I'll write like the prose in this environment where I don't necessarily have to look at a preview or, you know, anything else. I can just sort of write it from memory. Um, so that's where I get all my hardcore work done. And again, I, I might do these in like the TTY without a graphical environment if I really want to. Um, so I also do, uh, depending on what I'm doing, I'll do some work in splits. Uh, so I might have, you know, a split open, um, you know, if I need to modify, you know, move from move something from one paragraph to another it's very efficient to just have splits um, so I do that as well um, but in general um, uh, in general I guess this is pretty much it um, this I'm not gonna go too much into what I'm actually doing right now but this gives you should give you an idea of the kind of setup I'm using um, uh, so yeah I guess thanks for watching if you have any questions uh, about the setup or just in general feel free to ask uh, so thanks for watching see you next